Hello, it's Julianne. Today, we're finally going to be addressing the burnout that I have certainly been feeling. And I feel like you guys can feel from me through my last few vlogs as I've done a very bad job hiding it. And I mean, she's certainly there, she's creeping, but it's not full blown burnout at this point yet. So I figured we can be taking some preventative measures in order to make it an easier mess to deal with than like full blown burnout. More specifically, we're gonna be doing this with hobbies, which I'm so freaking hyped about because I feel like everyone this year has really been on their hobby game and I've been falling behind. I don't really like that. So this entire vlog is gonna be dedicated to just doing the things that I like that fulfill me outside of work. I mean, we're gonna do like this much work because who am I kidding? I have a stack of things to do and I would just feel really bad about myself if I didn't do any of it. So we're gonna do like 90% hobbies and a little bit of like packing orders. So without any further yapping, I'm just gonna get right into the video and I'm actually so excited for this video because I get to just like do whatever I like or I just like fell off of and I'm curious if I still like it and it's still considered work and productive because I'm making a video and it's just like it's satisfying that little like psychotic workaholic part of my brain and I'm feeling pretty good about it. <laughs> so to get started, we're gonna stay in the arts and crafts realm a little bit because even though being a full-time artist is really such a blessing, I have so many interests in the arts and crafts realm that I just don't get to do for my job. And I would like to keep it that way. I don't want to monetize literally everything that I touch. <laughs> and quite honestly, I am most interested in the crafts that are most different from drawing so that I don't have the pressure of having to be good at them. And that might sound like stupid and even arrogant. But the thing is that when you're doing this full time, I feel like there is like a weird expectation on you to just like have to be good at the craft right away. And that's just not realistic because the mediums are just so different. <laughs> like I can't go to a wine and paint night because even though my friends don't mean to, like I know that they're looking over at my canvas expecting it to be like kind of good. And like, I just want to drink and like paint poorly. The whole point is to be like drunk and just having fun. But I can't do that because there's too much pressure. <laughs> So more specifically, I'm really interested in crocheting and pottery. And I have like this much experience in pottery and crochet. And the last time I crocheted anything, it was like a little square and I was a single digit. So that was two decades ago. So I'm gonna need a lot of guidance in this crochet journey. And so I'm so grateful to say that today I'm gonna be taking classes with Skillshare who are very kindly sponsoring this video. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry pros across film, illustration, productivity, and so much more. Normally, I like to use Skillshare for my business in terms of learning things like productivity skills or even like email marketing, which has helped me out a ton. But today I want to like reinvest into myself and learn some new hobbies. And so I'll be taking the class Modern Crochet with Tony Lipson. And guys, the first 500 people to use my link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So if you're interested in taking any classes at all, whether or not it's to improve yourself as a small business owner or just to learn a new hobby, check out that link down below. You can try out as many classes as you want. Absolutely free and thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So I have my yarn and look at it. I went with neutrals because I don't really know what I'm doing with this. I think I'm just gonna make basically a square so I learned some basics. And then afterwards, I want to make a sock. And I know square to sock seems like a big jump, but I think we can do it. I don't think crocheting could be that difficult. But I also have that like mental disease where I look at something and I think I can do that. Like. Someone knitting a whole ass sweater, I can do that. Uh, taking down an entire wall in your house, I can do that. So we'll see how that goes. But first we're just gonna do like the little square. So we get started with the basics and I know how to actually crochet. <laughs> and I also got this guy and it's also super soft. Basically, I just wanted to look for things that were neutral and soft cause I didn't want to deal with anything that was like scratchy or rough cause I got sensitive hands, sensitive fingers, and I'm an adult. Why not just buy the nicer stuff? All right, I got my little crochet thingy. I don't know what this is called, a hook? I don't know, but it's green and it's cute and it's exactly the size I need. So here we go, I'm so excited. Um, I don't know what to make my square with. I feel like obviously it would be this one, but I kind of want to make the square with this one. So we'll do that. Wait, what if I want to make my socks with this one? Whatever, we'll make the square with this guy. Where does the yarn start? Is this correct? 
Oh, good. It is correct. <laughs> I made a slip knot. Okay, onto the hook. All right, baby, we are in business. I don't know what it is, but I'm trying to hold the yarn. Like I'm trying to hold this and this to have enough tension the way that she is, but like I'm not doing it right, I don't think. It definitely can't be. This is like kind of more complicated than I thought. How did I figure this out when I was eight? What the heck? I can't wait until this gets relaxing. Right now I'm a little stressed out. Like this little teeny part, like how do I hold on to it? Oh, and I am having a little bit of a hard time seeing my little knots because I guess I'm an old lady now. I just can't see anything. I split my little yarn. Go inside, please. Go inside the hole. Okay, nice, nice. I think I did a single stitch. And now we do a double stitch. Ooh, okay. That's the first double stitch that went kind of smoothly. Single stitch, nice. Still trying to figure out how to hold this thing. It's literally the next day. I just woke up. As you can see, I'm in my pajamas. I have the ears on and I am just having the time of my life. I get it, guys. I see the appeal. I like don't want to stop doing this. <laughs> it's just like so mind numbing. And that sounds like a bad thing. But for me, I have ADHD and really bad anxiety. So like my brain's never shutting up. This is really just putting her in her place, telling her to pipe the fuck down. Sorry, sorry. I was told to stop swearing as much in my videos, but I don't know. I feel like that's like extra work for me because then I have to remember to do that. And then the second you make like this whole process work, I just don't want to do it anymore. So I'll try my best, but I'm still not going to be that great at it. Sorry. <laughs> But yeah, I can see why you guys do this on the plane. I can see why you guys do this on trains. It's just fun to grind, especially when you get to the part where it's just like doing the same thing for like a million rows in a row. Oh my God, it just, that's the best part. I don't know if that's the best part for you guys out there who crochet, but it's certainly the best part to me. I'm really enjoying it. I can't wait to finish this thing. And again, it's a sock <laughs> and it might not look it right now, but this is like the little toesy part and it folds onto itself like so, so my little toesies go here and then my little heel folds up like that and that's where my heel goes. And so I'm working at the top of the sock right now and it's gonna fold on top of each other and then I'm gonna sew it and it's gonna be a sock and it's gonna be the world's ugliest sock because I was learning how to do double crochets and half double crochets and that was really confusing. And also it was like changing in sizes here and that was confusing. And also this yarn is fuzzy and I didn't know that the fuzzier the yarn, the harder it is for a beginner because it like frays and it's really hard to see the stitch, especially in the beginning part. Like I suck at like doing the chains and then the first row. I'm really, really bad at that because I can't find anything when I'm looking at it. I don't know what I'm looking at, but I'm having a great time. And again, it also it's gonna be ugly because I realized that you shouldn't make a sock in this style with like changing color yarn because the top and the bottom aren't gonna match. So my whole family is gonna have really ugly socks but I don't give a shit. They're just gonna take whatever I give them because it's my hard work and I'm gonna make a million of them. Also, I just realized that once you learn how to do this, you could just like make whatever you want. Like I could make this a thigh high sock if I wanted to. Maybe I'll do that. <laughs> Sounds interesting. I've never seen a thigh high sock before. Actually, the way I had it going already, 
it cannot be a thigh high sock but the idea is there i'm very excited for it Ooh. and honestly already because it's so like quieting of the mind i feel a lot better like about my whole burnout situation like already just doing a like a little bit of a hobby maybe it's like the whole mind quieting thing but i already feel so much better like i already feel rescued from burnout at this point point. and you might be thinking like julianne you're an artist isn't your job already just like a hobby that's glorified and like yes and no like i get it art is amazing i'm so freaking blessed to be able to do it full time and i would never trade it for anything else the actual work of being an artist never gets old it's just like all the business admin stuff that gets old very fast and again i know i try not to be so complaining about it because i know i'm in a very privileged situation but at the same time it's like really hard to talk to people about it because it is like a different kind of pressure i'm not gonna say it's like harder or more devastating <laughs> than other kinds of pressure but it's like like the fear of bankruptcy guys is like really like always there and it never goes away and it's all on you you know it's just you are the only person that can make or break this business and sometimes it's like not even your fault you know like i know so many artists who are trying their best to try to make this their full-time thing and it's just not working out. And it's not because they're a bad artist. It's just, they just didn't get lucky. Like I got tremendously lucky to be in the position I'm at. So it feels bad complaining or saying that I'm like burnt out. But again, it's just, it the work never ends. And of course it's like, you get to choose your own hours. I mean, and you also get to choose how many hours, but not really. It is forever. I can never turn it off because there's always more work to be done. There's more things to think about. There's more things to feel bad about because you're not doing enough. And literally every single coin I see come into my little pocket I am directly responsible for and I can track it <laughs> and so it's just it's just a lot of pressure but then again can't complain it's the dream job and I also think I'm just like kind of prone to burnout I didn't learn that I had like ADHD which sounds again it's like a whole annoying thing where like people don't really believe that ADHD is something that like actually impairs you but I'm really forgetful and I don't understand timing and that's really bad as a business owner <laughs> and so it's so easy for me to feel like I am just being a really lazy person my business is failing because I'm lazy but at the same time I also think like man I'm working so many hours I work like 14 hours a day like literally four <laughs> that sounds like an exaggeration but I'll like literally wake up at 7 30 and I'll start working at 8 and then I work until like 5 play a little pickleball eat a little dinner and then I work again and then I work into the little wee hours of the night it's hard to feel like it's not all my fault that's all I'm trying to say it's a really long-winded way to say it but yeah I also learned that traveling a lot for work really takes a lot out of me too i have always known that i am more introverted so like talking to a lot of people interacting with a lot of people will always drain me and i knew that going into conventions but i didn't know to like what extent it would do that to me so learning how to balance that has been a lot too and on top of like everything else i have to do it's just so low priority i'm probably talking in circles at this point but in summary it's just hard for everything to not feel like it's all my fault <laughs> and it's hard to not feel like all the wins are just because i got lucky so yeah i'm just like constantly in a little cycle of trying to rescue myself from burnout but i'm getting a lot better at it i don't know if you've noticed or if you've been watching me for a while but i used to just like go 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 until i would like fully burn out and then i would disappear for a million years and then come back super motivated and then do the whole thing again but now with like little hobbies like this or just like a lot more self-reflection and being a little bit easier on myself. I'm starting to get a little bit better about recognizing when I'm burning out and then trying to do little things to alleviate it. So I'm kind of proud of myself for that. Like this, this is going to be in my life forever. I think this is going to solve everything. I can't wait to show you guys my ugly sock. <laughs> Okay, I just spent my entire Sunday finishing just one amazing, ugly sock. <laughs> look, I couldn't even get the stitching the right color because I didn't get to that part of the yarn yet. Like, look at that. And also, this is all scrunchy because I stitched way too many this side compared to this side because the lady said to count, but I didn't, I didn't want to count. So I just kind of like made it work. I just scrunched it up a little bit. And when I made the collar thing, and 
let's just first appreciate that I even made like a little collar thing. Like, look at that. As you can see, this is probably the best view. I lost track of how big each one was and it just kept getting bigger and bigger. So when I realized it, I just went back down in size and it kind of, I don't know, I did it like perfectly in the middle. So it kind of looks like this and then the back of the sock, it's shorter, <laughs> but it's fabulous. I love her so much. She, she's so ugly and I'm going to wear them all the time. Not outside, of course, but like indoors, like before bed, totally going to put these guys on. Ah, they're so cute. <laughs> I know this is like the first hobby we're doing for this video, but it's literally, this is my favorite thing. <laughs> Good morning. We have a nice cozy day out. It is like gloomy and 62 degrees. So it's perfect for a light sweater and some cute leggings that highlight my little butt. And it's also an excellent day to go to a coffee shop and do a little bit of reading, which I'm so freaking hyped about because I have never done that before. When I go to a coffee shop, it's all business. It's all work and a little bit of play via matcha latte. But today I'm gonna be so cute. I'm gonna bring a little book with me. And the book that I'm gonna be reading today is Black Leopard Red Wolf. And it is very different from my usual kind of read. I am a YA fantasy romance kind of girl. And yeah, I love like straight up political fantasy as well. I love like Brandon Sanderson, love Game of Thrones. But at the end of the day, when I'm just chilling and I wanna read a book, I just wanna be in a cute world with a little like kissy kissy, you know? But this book is not it. This book is dark. It is mystery. It is a lot of graphic death, but it's really, really good. Actually, I wouldn't say but, and, and it's really, really good. <laughs> I'm only a little bit into it, but so far it's very, very interesting. Like there's a lot of African history and mythology that is mixed into this book. And basically it follows a character named Tracker who's being interrogated. So he's recounting his story of banding with this group of people to find a mysterious little boy. And you don't know if he's lying. You don't know if the people around him are lying. So very, very interesting. And also Michael B. Jordan bought the rights to make the movie for this book. And so if that ever comes out, I get to be like, I read the book before and I love being that person. And of course we have my handy dandy tote bag. I swear I have other ones that I use. It's just, this is the go-to. I just love her so much. And so we're packing her up. I have my iPad in there too, because of course, of course we have to do a little bit of work if I'm gonna be at the coffee shop, but mostly reading, I swear. And it's like so nice to be back in like my little reading girl era. I kind of fell off towards the end of college cause I was going so hard in like the entrepreneurial direction. <laughs> I was really just trying to establish myself as an artist. And so I had no time for any other kind of funny business, but I'm back at it. I'm back in my little book grind. I've been grinding through the SJM universe. I know it's a meme, but I love it so much. I finished all of Aquatar. I finished Throne of Glass, Air of Fire, which I just finished. And also I read Assassin's Blade before all of that. And I know that's wrong, but I read like the wrong internet article. Okay. Like it told me Assassin's Blade first. And I really wish I didn't ruin it for myself that way. And I also started Crescent City. So that's very exciting for me. But Aquatar is my favorite of them so far. I mean, I really like the Throne of Glass series. It's true YA and it's not very smutty. But Aquatar was like my first experience into like the whole fairy porn world. So, so I want to show you guys this map. Look at it. Look at it. It's incredible. Look at all the little detail. Did she use a fucking microscope to make this? Cause it was handmade. It was handmade by Cassandra Lynn Reeds. I think that's her handle. I will put it right here. I'll link it down below. She's incredible. She's an artist. She's a reading girly. She has a lot of really cute reading vlogs. And so if you're a fan of like cute girl fantasy, then check her out because she has a lot more maps that are really worth checking out. And again, she does this all by hand, all by hand with a pen, which is, I, I cannot fathom why. I mean, I get it. It's very beautiful. The results are beautiful. I see why, but I could never. <laughs> anyway, that's enough ranting for now. Um, let's get on over to the coffee shop.
Okay, is this not the cutest coffee shop in the world? But look at this. It's eggplant, sun-dried tomatoes, mozzarella, and basil. Oh, I just showed you just the plate. It's so cute. A little sprig of rosemary for no reason, but I love it. And I also got a senchong. And I had to take a pause in the book for a little bit because, okay, I was talking about how like I love my little fairy smut, right? And so I'm not really scared of like the graphic nature of like sex and whatnot, but like I didn't expect this book to get like very graphic with the sex and it, it did like right away. Very interesting. <laughs> Just took me aback a little bit. The sencha, first of all, very yummy, but I read a few chapters of this book. I think I read like five or six chapters. I'm still at the beginning, but what I find really funny about this is that he's talking to like an interrogator or an inquisitor right now, and they're specifically asking about like the mysterious child that they all went to go try to find, right? And this guy is like, all right, I'll tell you the story. For, <laughs> he starts like all the way back in the beginning. He's just like, since I was a child, it's like, so we're still like learning a lot about his childhood, but I can only imagine like this inquisitor is like, this is not what I asked you for. I just want to know about you finding this child with this like group of people. So I think he's like really self-important and he kind of thinks like he's the man. And I'm really excited to learn like what other characters think about him because in the sequel, it comes from other people's perspective, like other people within the group. So I want to see like how they view him because he like talks about himself in like a very epic way and then he has a, like a lot of like cool comebacks but I wonder, I like wonder if those comebacks are like cool to other people because as a reader you're like wow that was, you got him, that was pretty cool but I can only imagine like, he, like what if he's like annoying, he might be annoying because like why are you talking about your childhood when we're asking you about a crime that occurred in your adulthood <laughs> I guess he's all about context. He loves the cheese me. He just, I don't know. It's kind of funny. But anyway, I gotta get some work done. So I am making a video where I'm drawing everything that I ate in a specific city. And I still need to draw all those things that I ate in this specific city. I think I finished about half of the food, but I still need to do the rest of it. So that's what we're gonna do now. slowly working through all of them right now. I still have like the tuna dish to go through. This is the white fish. I have silver fish and also the dessert. So this is gonna take a while. Also look at these pastries I got. This is brioche with whipped cream and pistachio and this is a vanilla croissant. Or croissant. Oh my god there's a bookshop nearby. Literally a dream. Okay, tell me why I went into the cutest little vintage bookshop with a lot of incredible used books and literature and I came out with fucking Dune. A brand new copy too. I, <laughs> I tried to find like a used version so that, I don't know, it's like recycling, but this is what I came out with and I'm very happy with it. <laughs> One day, maybe I'll be into like high-end literature, but for now, I'm just into my little sci-fi politics. <laughs> I just got home and I just had like the cutest little afternoon, did I not? You guys witnessed it, it was so cute. Like that little bookstore was incredible. The coffee shop I had never been to before, it was so cute, I'm definitely coming back and the food was actually really good. And all their coffee drinks looked really good too, but I'm not much of a coffee drinker. So I think next time I go, I'm gonna get like a dirty chai or something. And it's like so cute to go to a coffee shop and read. Like I've always admired those girls who go to coffee shops and read and I was like, oh, I wanna be one of them. But I realized I can just like do it and be one of them. And I'm very 
very proud of myself and will be doing that a whole lot more or at least just bringing a book with me when I go work at a coffee shop. So when I take a little break, I can be like a cute little reading girl. Anyway, I have some more drawing to do, more of those food drawings. I have my references right over here and I'm also gonna be watching Sex in the City and I realize, horrible show, I know, but I love binging it for some reason. It's very addicting. And there are no redeeming characters in the show, I fear, in my opinion. If you love the show, it's fine. And I know everyone loves Samantha and I feel like she is my favorite character even though I don't really like any of them. But like her flirting is like, if I was her friend and she was flirting with a guy in front of me the way that she does, I'd be so embarrassed. <laughs> I get so much secondhand embarrassment from her flirting, but it's okay. Like she's doing her, she's confident, love that for her. But because I know some of the sensibilities are a little bit delicate here. I'm gonna blur it out so you don't see all the nasty things that they're doing. But yeah, let's get to work and then, and then we can get back to our cute little hobbies because I'm having so much fun with this video. <laughs> my musty dusty conditions i did my hair math wrong so it is like one or two days past where i usually want to wash it and it's quite oily and slick so don't don't look at it <laughs> anyway we are about to go play pickleball and if you've been following me for a while you know that it is like my second love at this point art is number one actually that's not true Art is number one, food is number two, and then pickleball is just like right there with it. I used to be a tennis player. I used to be semi-competitive, not super competitive about it, but I was a decent player. The thing about tennis that I didn't love was one, it's a little bit hard on your body, and two, it's kind of hard on the community aspect because there's not a lot of places where you can play like pickup tennis. Basically, you always have to have like a group of people to schedule with and you have to really make sure that everyone's around the same level or it's just not fun. So when I found Pickleball, it was just like such a great community. Everyone's so open and so welcoming and so much fun. And it's pickup style, so you can just like go to any park and just like put down your paddle and then you get to play. There's also like a large range of competition. If you want it to be like just like super relaxed with your friends, you can just have it be super relaxed with your friends. But if you want to get a little bit more athletic, a little bit more competitive, then there's room for that as well. And um, I'm kind of always like, always a large truck for no reason. <laughs> it's a small street, I swear, but just, they just love driving down it. I kind of swing in between. I love just like having fun with my friends, but also I like being a little bit more competitive and getting quite the workout. So I'm just gonna pick out my outfit now. I don't have too many options here because some of it's in the laundry. And unfortunately I've been like outgrowing a lot of like my skirts and my shorts because pickleball, good for that booty. So a lot of the options here today are skirts because you can hide the fact that I don't really fit them anymore because they're so flowy. Anywho, I'm gonna show you guys all the skirt options I got. So I, I've been holding this like really cute Lululemon frilly one. Look how cute it is. It's so pleated and it like moves really cute. But the thing is because it moves like so much, like when you're turning, it like really does like the little twirly thing. It's kind of windy today. So like it like flies up a lot and then my little booty cheeks are out. So I don't know if I'm gonna go with this one. We also got this other, I think these are all Lululemon actually. We got these guys, which is another score situation. Kind of like a dark teal. And the best part to these is that phone pocket, fantastic. Next up, we have this teensy little one. This one, I don't know if you can tell, but it's a lot shorter than the other ones. And it has like this like little band aspect, which I don't love all the time, but sometimes I am into it. So it's kind of like a mood dependent thing. And again, it has like the little zipper and the little pocket, Lululemon, great for these guys. And our last pant option, it's just a regular white skirt. What is this from? This is just a Nike skirt. So the first non Lululemon item, again, very boring, just a white skirt. But the thing is that I feel like white on a, a court of any kind just looks super cute. So we're gonna keep these guys in mind while I show you guys our shirt options, which are, now that I'm looking at it, a lot more limited. Because <laughs> again, everything's in the laundry. Anyway, Lululemon top number one. We got this guy. This is the Lululemon Align. So they make your boobies look pretty good because they like really push that stuff up and it's cute but it's a little off-white so when I wear it with this it looks dirty but it's not it's just the coloring of the shirt so if I wear this I can't wear it with this I'd have to wear it with this which I don't know if that's like too much going on with the color and the pattern is that too much or I can wear it with the pink not too bad. This is all Lululemon. I'm so sorry, but a lot of the stuff I wear is Lululemon just because I know a lot of people with the discount and it's it's just good quality stuff. Anyway, just this like little crop top t-shirt. Of course, this can go with everything. 
It can go with this, it can go with this. It's kind of like a more neutral thing to go with if I wanna go with a more loud skirt. So that's probably the black option. Oh, and then I have this really cute light pink top. As you can see, I own a lot of light pink. I, I can't show up like this though. This is, this is too much, especially since my paddle is pink and my shoes are pink. Hold on, let me show you my shoes. Okay, I'm back. You might think this is too much, but these are my shoes and I have to get new ones soon because if you look at the bottom, look at that, that's smooth. There's no traction left on these. But I swear I didn't mean to get all the pink stuff just to get pink stuff. These were on sale and they were also cute. And the paddle, I mean, a pink paddle is just so cute. I did do that on purpose. But now that's just way too much with these options. So that is the risk of wearing these because of the shoes and the paddle situation. Then we have this really cute top that I got on sale. It was like $30 at Lululemon. Look how cute it is. And I love how vibrant it is, especially since I'm like a little tanner. Okay, I don't know if my tan shows up on here, but in person, I'm pretty tan, just not my face. And it just like looks cute with the color I am right now. So this, of course, looks cute with the white. It looks cute. Is it too much with the pink? Is that too much? I don't know. Green? No, no, no. Eh, I feel like on like a poster, this would look really great, but I don't know if it would look great on my body. And the black, of course, I think this looks cute. I don't know how to model it for you. Not bad. And because it's a little windy, I have this like meshy white long sleeve situation, which I just wear a little sports bra underneath with, but you really can't see it. It's just nice and loose and I usually wear it with shorts. I just thought I'd give myself the option just in case. Again, Lululemon, but it's not from the tennis collection. I think it's from the runner's collection. I do not run, by the way. Do not love that for my knees. I think I'm gonna try on this pairing and then this pairing, and then we'll see what we like best. Okay. <laughs> it's a little bit like, it's a little bit like toddler dance recital. So I don't really know. <laughs> I don't really know about this with the pink shoes and my little white visor, that's just, that's, this is too much. I'm gonna take this one off. <laughs> okay, this is option number two. It's super basic. I feel like the top is really what's making it. And if you can see, my little booby cup thing is like awry right now, so don't look at it. I'm gonna fix it off camera, I promise. But yeah, I don't know. I think it's just like simple and cute. I wear my little white visor. It's like a little cute white sandwich. And then my little pink shoes with my little pink racket. I think that's cute. Or I can try this on just to double check and see if I like it. I think I'm gonna do that. <laughs> this is a different vibe for sure. Hmm. I don't know if this is the vibe or the white is the vibe. I'm playing ladies games today. So I don't know if that changes anything. No, that doesn't change anything. <laughs> I don't know why I said that, but hmm. All right, changing back to the white. The white will be the outfit. Oh, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like with a little visor. Cause I think it looks cute with the visor. And then the little shoe moment, cute. Oh wait, and this is my paddle. Look at her, look at her. It matches perfectly. Oh, I am happy with this. <laughs> Good evening, cutie patooties. We are post shower. I'm feeling good, I'm feeling fresh, and I'm ready to start doing a little bit of cozy gaming, which is the last hobby that I am reinstituting into my life. And I'm so freaking hyped. I, you guys have no idea because I haven't been able to get back into video games for the longest time. 
because I like straight up have like addiction issues when it comes to video games. And like, yeah, that sounds really sweaty. And I assure you, it is just as sweaty as it sounds. Like I am a video game grinder and it's not like I'm playing like COD or League or anything like that. Like I'm grinding Stardew Valley. I am grinding Animal Crossing. <laughs> it's funny because I'm very much not a capitalist in real life. I am very much a socialist, but when it comes to these games, there's nothing I love more than amassing wealth as fast as possible, as efficiently as possible. And so I get severely addicted to them. And when I say severely addicted, I mean like grinding six to eight hours a day, which is literally like a full-time job every single day. And what happens is that I usually do this for like a month or two. And obviously it's unsustainable because like who who's doing that? No one's able to do that. And usually by the end of the month or two, then I realize oh my god, I've lost my life to this entire game. My life's in shambles. I had to pick it back up. And then I cut off cold turkey. And so that's what happened with Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley. Like, I just got called out by my friend the other day because on Switch, you can see each other's, like, hours of how much you've played of something. And I logged 400 hours of Animal Crossing and I only had it, at the time when I was playing it, I only had it for, like, a month or two. So right when I got the game, 400 hours in... <laughs> And then cold turkey. I haven't looked at my island since. But I'm an adult now. And you know, I was an adult then too. But you know, I'm a different kind of adult now. And I think I'm ready to get back into gaming and doing it in a healthy, cute, and cozy way. And so today we're going to be playing Stardew Valley, which is such a favorite of mine. I almost failed a final in college because of Stardew Valley. <laughs> but it's okay. I passed. I got an A. Don't worry. But anyway, I set the setting. I have my little kombucha. So my fun drink. I have my, oh my god, my giant water bottle because staying hydrated is just so important for your health. That and like getting a ton of sleep is just like the key to staying healthy, honestly. I have my little switch set up to my computer. I have the cutest little remote control. It is Kirby, naturally. All of my uh, switch stuff is actually Kirby and I don't think that's a surprise to anyone. <laughs> and I got all my cute lighting out, which I don't know if I showed you guys. Actually, let me show you right now. Okay, let us all... Okay, I might be blinding you, so I'll turn this down. Like, look at that. It's a little dial. How cute. And it's from the same company as my table, so it's from Branch, and it's so freaking cute. And you can adjust it to whatever you want, so I'm gonna bring it all the way back up. And right over here, I have my little flower lamp, which I got on Amazon, and it's so freaking cute. And it has different color light settings, but I prefer the warm light because it matches this, but also warm light is kind of the cozy vibe, you know? Anyway, let's get on to the gaming. This is definitely not the most cinematic view I have ever had in my vlog, but I just wanted to let you guys know what I was thinking while I was playing, I guess. But one of my chickens didn't produce an egg today, and I don't really know what that's about, but um, I'm currently in fall in this game, and so apparently there's like a little, little festival tomorrow. How cute. It's another opportunity for me to flirt with either Abigail or Sebastian. But you know, Leah is also kind of coming on to me too, so maybe we'll do something with that. It's kind of just like, who's gonna be willing to marry me first. And you know what? It's kind of like that in real life too. <laughs> I didn't know I had a bok choy there, what the heck? Well, anyway, my little farming arrangement is not my proudest right now because I had some like weird incidences with uh, my sprinkler situation. So it's not ideal. And I'm spending a lot of time just like watering plants. And I don't want to be because I finally unlocked the... Oh my god, look at all these eggplants. Um, I finally unlocked the uh, bus stop. And I think it's going to take me somewhere where I can collect a bunch of stuff that I need to refurbish the community center. But you see what I mean by you can just like really grind these games. Like there's so many things where it's like, oh my god, I can like refurbish the community center. Or I can unlock this like new thing. Or I can go to the secret forest. And I'm just like, oh, 
I love it. I just love it so much. I just wish I like planned out this little plot of land a little bit better so I'm not just watering so much. But that's okay. That's okay. When spring comes, I'm gonna be so much better. Hopefully by that time we will have found some iridium and that means that I can finally build like a really good sprinkler and that'd be so nice because I hate watering. Like, look, I'm being so inefficient with my time. Just like my real life business, being very inefficient with my time and not having good systems set in place. <laughs> The funny thing is that I'm like burnt out from my job where I'm running a little business, right? But then I go on my, my little switch and then I just run another little business, but a little fake business. And for some reason, I like that better <laughs> and it relaxes me. It's insane. I know. I'm not in my right mind. Oh shit. I already got rid of all my milk. Stupid. And it looks like my little topaz is ready. And I'll just stick another topaz in there. Let's check out this bus stop. <gasps> oh, we can go somewhere! 500, my god. We're going to the Calico Desert. This drunk bitch is gonna drive me there? What the hell? Pam is a drunk bitch. I'm not comfortable with this. <gasps> oh my god, so cute. Can you, can you guys see that? Hold on. Let's do a better view. Oh my god, I think I need this for the community center. <gasps> ooh, ooh, we're gonna fish. We're gonna fish. We're so gonna fish. All right. Oh, <gasps> a new kind of fish. Why is this fish so hard to catch? Oh my god. A coconut. This is my lover. friends this is the outro because i forgot to film the outro but here we are we're doing it thank you so 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 much for watching this video i know it's not really the usual thing uh there's very little art there's very little studio but i don't know i just i feel like it's still within the same vibe as the other videos but this time i just got to do things that i love that aren't stressful and i had to set aside intentional time for free time because i usually don't really give myself that much free time so i'm feeling just like very good about it speaking of things that i feel good about i just came out with a video that means a lot to me because i worked super super hard on it and it combines two things that i absolutely love which are food and art those are like the two great pillars of my life and it's called drawing everything i ate in washington dc so if you have the time if you love me please check out that video because i know it's different than my usual videos but i just i don't know it's still kind of the same vibe it's just me eating with drawing everything i eat it's fun check it out and if you want to see anything else from me subscribe to my channel check out the description box below all of that good stuff and i'll see you guys next week bye